Hey guys, what's up? Let's write a script to give us unlimited arrows in Neo and use a few new commands to deal with shared game code. Welcome to Game Hacking 203, the third video in the 200 series. We're picking up right where we left off in the last two videos, so I'd recommend checking those out first if you haven't already. And if you have no idea where to begin with Cheat Engine, check out the 100 series. Links to both series are on the screen and in the description below. All right, let's get started. I've got Cheat Engine pulled up and attached to Neo, and I've got the game code tied to arrows from Game Hacking 202 pulled up right here. And if you watched that video, you might recall that when I disabled this code by replacing it with nothing, my arrows drain all the way down to zero. So what's up with this code? Well, it's set up extremely similar to the instruction we were dealing with before, except this command is obviously different, and this register has numbers in it, and this little W right here is inside the register too. So let's take a closer look at the SUB command first. It does stand for subtract, and it's doing exactly what you would expect it to do, subtracting stuff. And it's subtracting left to right, destination minus source. Then it places the result into the destination. So for example, if the destination were to equal 10 and the source were to equal 3, you just take 10 minus 3, which would be 7, and then put that 7 into the destination. Nothing too crazy, right? So let's head back to the code I had pulled up. We have the SUB command, and then we have this address, which is the address of the arrows, and then we have this register. And if I select the code and pull up the registers Cheat Engine tracked for us, we can see R15 way down here, which is holding a 1 preceded by all these zeros. And you might notice one thing missing. The W in the code is nowhere down here. We'll get into more details on this in future videos, but you see how big this register is and it's only holding a 1? Well, the W is making it so that only these last four digits here need to be used, and everything else can be ignored. So anyway, we see a 1 in R15, and what this code is doing is subtracting 1 from the address of my current arrows when I fire, and then updating arrows with the result. So next time I fire an arrow, this code will do the math 9 minus 1, which then updates the arrow address with the result, which is 8. And you might still be wondering why disabling the code drained the arrows down to 0. Wouldn't that just prevent the subtraction from happening and freeze the value of the arrows? Well, normally yes, but not in this case because of the game code that's happening around this instruction. So let's take a closer look at the game code and take a look at what's going on. And it's this code right here with this J and E command. And I won't get into the specifics in this video, but this J and E is expecting some kind of arithmetic to occur up here. And when I removed the code in the last video, the J and E command got confused and triggered a chain of code that removed all my arrows. Again, I'm skipping over a lot of the details here, but once we get more in-depth into this stuff later in the series, we'll circle back to what's causing this exactly. But for right now, let's just focus on writing a script for infinite arrows that won't screw with this JNE command. And we'll start with the usual steps. Tools, then auto-assemble, and then over here, template, cheat table framework, and then template, code injection. And like normal, we see the game code pulled in right here. Now, usually, we could disable this code with two slashes and we'd be good to go. But again, can't do that in this case. But it doesn't need to be subtraction. I could change this to addition by replacing SUB with ADD. And then when I activate the script, we can see that when I fire arrows, I'm now gaining arrows. And by the way, addition is very similar to subtraction, left to right. And then it stores the result of the addition into the destination. And instead of addition, I can restore the original code by putting the SUB back in and then come above it and move 0 into the R15 register. Just be sure to put the W here because it's in the original register. And now the arrows will be subtracted by 0, which means when I click OK and activate the script, they shouldn't change at all. And there you go, we can see that this is working. And another cool thing is that this code is being shared by these other arrows too. And this is because the exact same game code is handling the instruction for both arrows. And if I quickly scan for the value of the new arrows and right click to show it writes to it, we can see that the code is the same. But unfortunately, these aren't the only things being used by this shared opcode. And I'm going to come over to the shrine and make some offerings to show you. So what should happen is when I make an offering, the item gets sacrificed, so to speak, and gets pulled from my inventory. But when I activate the script, you can see that the items are just kind of stuck there. And this might be great and exactly what you want, but now we got to remember to turn off the script when we want to get rid of items. And then turn it back on when we want unlimited arrows. Kind of annoying and not what I'm going for here. 
And besides, in a lot of games, things like health will also use the same code for you and the enemies. And most of the time, you probably don't want to give yourself and the enemies infinite health. So, we might as well explore how to deal with shared code now, because it comes up in a lot of games, and you'll be very limited in what you can do unless you learn how to target certain things in your scripts. So, with the script turned off, let's head back to the disassembly. And right-click in the code for arrows, and then choose Find Out What Addresses This Instruction Accesses. And now I'll fire both kinds of arrows, which loads their addresses and current values into this window. And now I need to load in a few items that aren't arrow addresses into the window. So I'll offer up a few in the shrine. Three should be good. And now I've got the two arrow addresses and the three non-arrow addresses in the window. All right, the point of all this is that we're gonna be looking for something that is tied to all of these different items, is the same for the two arrow addresses, but different for these three other items, and never changes throughout the entire game, like ever. And once we find that, we can use it to update the script and target just the arrows. And my preferred way to find what we need is to scan for commonalities. So I'll first select the two arrow addresses and then right click and come down to find commonalities. Then mark these as group one. Then I'll come down and select these three addresses of the non arrows, right click and mark them as group two. Now I just gotta right click on any of the addresses and this time click scan for commonalities. And before I actually do any scanning, this window pops up and kind of gives us a preview of which registers may contain similar group values. So if I come down to this R12, it's saying that group 1 has a value of 0x1 and group 2 has a value of 0x0. Now, this 0x in front is just a way of saying that this is hex 1 and hex 2, so they're not confused with the 1 and 2 from the more well-known decimal system. And remember, I assign the arrows as group 1 and the other three items as group 2. And this R13 below it has a group difference as well. Hex 0 for the arrows and hex A for the other items. And this is actually kind of perfect. So instead of any additional scanning, I'll just use one of these two registers. And I'll pull up this little comments window built right into Cheat Engine, and I'll set up a quick table here and type in the registers and group values so I can keep track of things when I start writing the script. And I'm keeping track of both registers and their values here, by the way, because I don't know which of these may or may not be a value that never changes yet. So I want to have a backup just in case the first one I use doesn't work out. All right, now let's go finish our script. We'll be using two new commands to make this work. CMP and J and E, which work best when used together as a combo. First, I'll type CMP, which is short for compare, and then I'll put a space, and I'll want to compare one of the two registers I added to the comments window with its corresponding value that's tied to the arrows. So I'll choose R12, then I'll put a comma, and I'll put in one. So with this code here, every item that comes through will have its R12 value searched. Just below this code, we'll write a new one using the J and E command, which causes problems in the last video, but will now be working for us in our script. J and E is part of a family of jump commands, and all jump commands don't need a source because they get their intel from the code above them, so only a destination will be needed. In this case, I'll choose original code as the destination. Be sure to spell it exactly as you see it, but leave out the colon. So, J and E stands for jump if not equal, and it will send anything meeting the condition above straight to original code. All right, let's start from the beginning to get a clear picture of what should happen when I activate this script. When any item is used and the game wants to subtract it, it'll pass through our script here. Each item will first get stopped by the CMP and have its R12 search for a value of 1. Then the item will proceed to the J and E. If R12 is equal to 1, then it will be ignored and keep going in a straight line right into where we have a code that places 0 into the R15W register. Then it will keep going down to the original code and 0 will be subtracted from the item instead of whatever the game wanted it subtracted by. But if an item comes through and R12 is not equal to 1, this J and E will stop it from going straight down the code and instead make it jump over everything between it and the chosen destination which means it won't get touched by the code here and will be updated normally as the game intended. And since R12 is one for the arrows but not one for the other items, only the arrow should be allowed to pass through the J and E and have its R15W updated with zero before it hits the subtraction to become infinite. Let's test it. I'll make a few offerings first. And our script is letting these items decrease. Now for the ultimate test. Let's see if arrows are frozen in place. 
And they are, which means the script is working exactly as intended. And since we now know the basic process to deal with shared opcodes, let's go after stamina, which is a float value. So I'll need to switch up the value type before I start scanning. And just speeding through this, since we've already covered exactly how to do this in the 100 series, which again, link in the description if you're lost right now. Alright, I've got it. Let's find what address writes to it. And oh, look! We've got a code constantly writing to it. I'll get a code injection template loaded up for it. And let's take a closer look at the original code. And we've got a new command which we haven't covered yet. M-O-V-S-S. And since we haven't dealt with this before, let's just disable the code and assign it to the cheat table. And I'll quickly rename things here so we don't get mixed up with the other stuff we've already done. And okay, I'll click activate. And in the game, I'll swing my sword a few times. And this doesn't appear to be doing anything I want. Not only is stamina decreasing, but it's also not regenerating. So I'll turn the script off and let's go back to the viewer. Well, XMM2 is obviously doing something. Let's just try moving a value into XMM2. I'll go with 500. But when I click OK, Cheat Engine is throwing up an error because it can't recognize this code. So I'll click no because I don't want to crash my game. And maybe the MOVSS kind of works like the MOV command. Let's try adding two S's on the back of MOV and I'll click OK again. But I get that same warning, so this isn't going to work. So what can we do? Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss Game Happy 204. We'll get into this and more.